Hey, what's up? In this video, I want to share my side of things on why I prefer web development over web design. And to do that, let me tell you the tale of my first freelance project, which was a web design project. You're right, your favorite React developer or Next.js, or in my free time, I also do Svelte, started as a web designer. Now, web design is something entirely different. Um, it's purely front-end based. As a web developer, you're kind of the jack of all trades, right? You do back-end, you do front-end, you do the interaction between both, and web designer is only focused on the front-end part. Now, my first freelance project was kind of a disaster. And the reason is that first we had no real contract and we massively undersold our price. We did the whole project for 750 euros, which is way too cheap. You cannot do a web design project for 750. It was for a book publishing company, not a small one, in a pretty big city. So 750 euros is kind of a joke um, and you should not undersell yourself that hard. Now, the second reason is the client was really happy initially, right? And now you're wondering, Josh, why is that bad? And I will get to that. First, the client was really happy because we used uh, mock-ups to design the books. It looked really well designed until she got into a Google Lighthouse. And she noticed that the website was really slow because the images weren't optimized really well. They were huge mock-ups after all. And, you know, I was a web designer. I knew how to make things look good, not how to make things fast, because that was kind of technical. And I had no idea how to do that. And the guy I was working with, he was great at communicating with clients. He had no idea how to do web development or web design. So I was kind of, you know, up to myself. I had to figure it out myself. And not only was she unhappy with the Lighthouse results, but then she also read up on technicalities that as a web designer, I had no idea about how to implement, like HTTP2. I didn't even know what that was, right? She wrote me an email one day, um, Josh, can you implement HTTP2 into this WordPress website? Because I was working with WordPress, just Elementor. Um, if you know WordPress, chances are you know what Elementor is. And I was asked to implement HTTP2. I had no idea what it is. After Googling, I figured out, hmm, I don't know how to do that. I need to come up with a way to figure that out. And the thing is, right, if you work with something like React, Next.js um, or Svelte, I think also works Svelte Kit, whatever it is, and deploy it to somewhere that is not total horse and deploy it, chances are you never have to worry about performance or actually very rarely do you have to worry about performance um, or HTTP2. If you deploy Next.js to Vercel, HTTP2 is right there out of the box, nothing to worry about, right? You do not have to worry about those things as a web developer because all these modern frameworks like Next.js or Svelkit do all the really heavy lifting for you. Now in Next.js, the big advantage it has is the optimized um, image optimization, which other frameworks kind of lack. Like if you work in Svelkit, for example, you still have to convert the images yourself into a web P and then compress that, whereas Next.js handles all that stuff under the hood. You don't even notice it, you just put it into the image component and boom, it works, it looks great, it works great, the website is really fast and in web design you have to do all that yourself. So in web design, if you're not very specific about which parts you do and which parts you don't and put that into the contract with the client, then chances are they're gonna keep reaching out to you about all those little technicalities and that really adds up, especially if you sell yourself for 750 euros and you do all that overtime work just to make the client happy and are unpaid for that because you forgot to mention that in the contract, you are not responsible for anything technical, but solely the design of the project. And to be honest, I do not think web development has any downsides over web design. Now, if you disagree, um, that is totally fine. Let me know your opinion in the comments because I might just not be uh, thinking about a specific point here. But in general, yes, you do have to learn how to code to do web development, but it is much easier. You're, you have way more freedom in the way you design things as well, right? If you write the HTML and CSS um, yourself, um, or you can also go the route of working with a UI library if you don't want to do that. But you have the possibility to design everything yourself, unlike in WordPress where it's kind of difficult and you have to abide by the rules of whatever tool you're using. So for example, for me, that was Elementor. You can't really go beyond what that tool allows you to do. Whereas if you code yourself, you can do anything. 
So yeah, you do have to learn how to code. I guess that's the downside of it because it takes time, but in turn that allows you much more freedom in the way you design and also in the way that your website has interactivity because re with React, it's kind of a breeze, right? You have state, you can update everything like you want, whereas in WordPress or in solely web design, even with, you know, modern tools like uh, Webflow, I guess, which makes animations and stuff really easy, you do not have that freedom. And I think that is a very big minus point on the web designer side because there's much more manual labor involved in optimizing images and, and so on. And even as a web developer, you can still choose an amazing CMS. Like you can do the same thing WordPress does, but handle all the front end stuff yourself in something like Next.js or React, right? For me personally, that's mostly Sanity.io that is not sponsored. And that's just the CMS I use for my clients. Normally, um, you could go with something else like Contentful or Payload CMS. Everything works quite well with React or Next.js or Svelte, whatever rolls your boat. So that's kind of my take on the whole web design versus web development thing. And that is why I won't switch back to web design because I think web development, even though you do have the trade-off of learning code, allows you much more freedom in everything you do. And other than, you know, the time investment really has no downsides. Again, if you disagree, let me know below. That's all I want to share. That's my take on the whole thing. Um, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And also, I hope you enjoyed the second camera perspective because that is the first time I'm trying that out in a video. So I'm excited to see how that turns out in the editing. All right, that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one and bye-bye.